Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States? The 113th Congress sworn in today. That was House Speaker John Boehner administering the oath of office to new House members and uh, returning House members. The arrival of the new Congress means the end of the 112th Congress and its legacy is one of the least successful legislatures in American history. The 112th didn't do much. It passed 219 bills. That is the fewest since the 1940s when stats on congressional productivity were first recorded. It was the most polarized Congress since Reconstruction at the end of the Civil War, <clears throat> excuse me, at least according to Carnegie Mellon University. And it's incredibly unpopular, just an 11% approval rating according to the most recent CBS News poll. How low is an 11% approval rating? That's less popular than Richard Nixon was during Watergate, less popular than airlines lost luggage and baggage fees and all, less popular than BP was during the oil spill in the Gulf. It's even less popular, and I don't know who's asking this, but it's less popular than the idea of the U.S. going communist. <laughs> And it's not hard to see why it is so unpopular, including the legacy of the outgoing 112th Congress. Well, they took us to the debt limit and almost defaulted. They took us over the fiscal cliff, oversaw a first ever downgrade in our credit rating, and still hasn't passed a budget. See a little bipartisan jabbing on both sides there. 112th Congress passed zero laws improving health care or health access while voting to repeal Obamacare 33 times. 112th not only failed to, to repeal the Defense of Marriage Act, denying same-sex couples the rights many other same uh, many other couples enjoy. It also provided funding for lawyers to defend DOMA in the Supreme Court after the White House declined to do so. And it's a Congress that saw a member, one of its own, fall victim to gun violence, forcing her retirement from public service, but took no action on reducing gun violence or seeking only to er widen areas of acceptable gun use instead. Uh, a little bit partisan there on some of the issues that we pointed out, but still, by all measures, a fairly ineffective Congress. So talk me down off the ledge, the congressional cliff, as it were, do we think the 113th, the new Congress, will be more productive than the old one was? Well, let me just say this. You know what's ironic? If you talk to some members of the 112th Congress, they will tell you that they were successful. They will tell you they went to Washington on a mandate to not increase spending, that their top priority was to cut, cut, cut. Now, history will say different, but they will say they kept that in the forefront of the public's eye, and thus they did their job. That's what some of them will say. The rest of us may see it differently, but that's their argument. A very fair point. A very fair point. You know, and I would also add that it bears uh, consideration that one of the reasons this Congress wasn't over -aggress overly aggressive in, in terms of trying to do things was because they knew they had a president that was going to stop them, most likely with a veto, and they frankly were optimistic <coughs> that there would be a change in the executive branch. And so this Congress, rightly or wrongly, chose to ride out uh, the last two years of President Obama's first term in hopes that Mitt Romney would be their leader and they really could get things done. It was a badly placed bet, but I think it explains a lot of their inaction. But issues like the fiscal cliff or the debt limit, these are the kinds of things that I think most of us feel like an earlier generation of Congress would have said, you know what, my position is one thing, but I'll take these actions that I don't like for the benefit of the country, for the, you know, there are things that we have to do. It seems like that has been lacking from Congress. Well, you think the <laughs> other day they decided to hold the line at spending to help the victims of Hurricane, mm -hmm. of Superstorm Sandy, right? This is where they hold the line. They let everything else go. And the Republicans, God love them, let everything else go, but they hold the line on victims of a, of a super storm. And we all know, because we live here, these victims. So it is absolutely absurd. And I agree, they may have been waiting for somebody to come, Mitt Romney or another Republican, but they don't know much about legislation if they think that legislation is, involves waiting for something and doing nothing, because it involves bargaining. And the only reason Obama won this round was because he knew to compromise. He didn't get what he wanted. He knew to compromise, then claimed victory. The Republicans sat there and did nothing. And uh, then they looked like losers. But Dean, the big word you said, <laughs> compromise. Co absolutely. Compromise. It's a Congress. You Re compromise. Right. That's what reasonable adults did in the past. But when you bring in this Tea Party crowd on this mandate <laughs> of we don't care, we're going to be reckless or whatever, no offense, cut, cut, <laughs> cut. And that's where we are now. You know my position <laughs> on the Tea Party because I've said it here many times. And that position is... Once again, they did not materialize on the steps of Congress. Their constituents voted them there, presumably because they didn't want them to compromise. So, 
<laughs> one, one reason for optimism so with the new 213th Congress. I'm that, really I'm gonna, sorry to all people. Take the water away. No, no. It's, sorry, everybody. Uh, with, the, with the 113th Congress, one <laughs> reason so for excited. optimism, it's the most diverse Congress we've ever had. We want to show you a few stats about uh, some of the legislators. Women now make up 18.8% of Congress. There are more than 100 in Congress. But women make up 50.7% of the U.S. population. Oh. African Americans, 8% in Congress, but they're 12.6% in the American population. Hispanics, 58 in Congress, 164 in the U.S. population. Asian Americans, 2.2 in Congress, 4.8 <coughs> uh, in, the, in the general population. And the LGBT uh, caucus, including the first ever openly gay <coughs> senator, 1.3% in Congress, 3.4% by some estimates in the U.S. population. The good news is those numbers are all trending in the right direction in terms of are. more diversity. So hope springs eternal. What, what, first of all, what do you think is the result of a more diverse Congress? Do you think, do you, think you get legislation so slowly to Slowly things will change. Slowly things are changing. It's not going to happen overnight. I mean, it's still a system where it's run by the speaker or by the legislative leaders of, of each party. And thus, you don't just go to Washington, and thus you're going to make a change. It's a system. It, you know, I, so slowly yeah. it's going to change. And I think there's a big question. There's been a lot of research on this question. Does bringing in diverse people really change the legislation? And in a system run by political parties, the answer is usually what Dominic said, which is no. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you're going to be more or less one thing. But what you might do is represent new ideas that may come to pass. But it is a very slow moving change when you're talking about the impact of diversity usually. What do you make of the fact that 19% of Congress are, are women, but they're 51% of the population? That we're 30% that percent short. Yeah. Yes, that's what I make of it. No, I think, you know, listen, I think women should rule the world, and I think that we need a lot more women in Congress. It might be a better place. But, you know, in the reality, will it change legislation? Not if a legislature is controlled <coughs> by a political party. Usually it won't make a difference because, as Dominic mentioned, they have to follow their leadership. And what we're lacking is leadership from the political parties, which is where we need to look at this if point. If women were in charge, I really believe there'd be no talk of going off a fiscal cliff or anything like that. I really believe they'd sit down at a table and get the deal done. If I was there, they wouldn't be talking at all. <laughs> My throat. <laughs> oh, I just thought you, you were going to say, like, you're just going to lay down the law, so there's no debate on these things. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> right, right. That, that's it. We're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to tell you why John Boehner's re-election as Speaker of the House today may not have been the shining <laughs> moment he might have been hoping for. We're going to get into that and more next. Stay with us.